given our view of demand, we see pricing starting to sort of stabilize in the 60 cent of watt range by 2015 for modules. Um, this, again, I would say the risk to this is that pricing is even lower than it is because of cost reductions that could enable costs to go even lower. We refer to this as the sort of the weaning period because um, you know, so the sort of overall dynamic that's driving this more sober growth is this transition that the industry is going from subsidized um, demand to unsubsidized demand. It's, it's this weaning period if you think you know, the, the metaphor I like to think about it is that the industry is a baby that's being weaned off of the breast milk of subsidies. And it's going to be, you know, slightly challenging as we move towards business models, as we move towards economics that are not supported by subsidies. And there, there's, a there's going to be a natural period of transition. And that, this particular phase we're in is that period of transition. The argument I want to make is that we have entered into a sort of fundamentally different era if you think about the dynamics that we've experienced from 2007 to 2010 compared to uh, 2011 and over the next few years, so let's say 2015. 2009 was also a difficult year um, for the industry, for those of you who remember, but um, it wasn't anywhere close to as, as difficult or challenging uh, as 2011 was. And my, my, my argument here is that it's not so much uh, overcapacity that causes, you know, that is responsible for um, the, the, you know, the strife that we're, uh, we've been witnessing over the last six to eight months, it's actually the physical buildup of production levels. Q4 of 2011 was by far the largest quarter we've ever had in terms of installations in the U.S. with about 776 megawatts installed. That led the annual total to be 1,855 megawatts in the U.S., so close to 1.9 gigawatts installed last year. That was 109% growth over 2010, and 2010 was 104% growth over 2009. So we are now running two years in a row with triple-digit growth in the U.S. solar market. It's time to stop looking at quarterly totals for installations in the U.S. as meaning anything because the utility market is getting so big. So the question is, can you name a few markets where there's actually going to be growth? Um, so here are three that we think should be growing for the next few years. New York, Massachusetts, and Hawaii. Hawaii um, is obvious because it hit grid parity a couple of years ago and prices have continued to fall. Massachusetts instituted a program in 2010 that took a while for people to get their heads around. Now it's starting to work. Finally, New York. Governor Cuomo just announced the New York Sun Act. That actually should create a pretty strong, if competitive, commercial market. If our U.S. market growth expectations pan out relative to our global demand growth expectations, then the U.S.'s market share, which has historically consistently been 5 to 7 percent, as much as the U.S. market has grown, it has grown more or less in tandem with the global market, should jump this year to over 10 percent and then ultimately kind of flatline around 15 percent in the 2015-2016 time range. So that means the U.S. market will continue to be more and more important. We will see more entrants. Um, we will see some exits probably as well, particularly manufacturers and utility-scale project developers, but the opportunity remains, and the next few years are going to be when it really plays out.